If you'd like a quick tip on how to lock focus to take better portrait photography, then stay tuned. This video is for you. I'm gonna try something relatively new, and that is the idea of creating quick tips. Now, I've heard from many of you who say, hey, I'd like to see you post more, and I would like to post more. A lot of my videos involve reviews on camera bodies and lenses and different types of photography, and I really enjoy doing those videos, but it does take a little more time to put those together. So as I go through all of my comments and I answer a lot of questions, I started thinking, you know, Maybe I could put together just some quick tips and get these videos out in addition to answering those questions. So that's what I'm gonna to try to do. Now, a majority of these videos are intended to be relatively short, just a few minutes long, and just to address from a high level perspective, some of your questions. So with all that said, let's go ahead and jump into the first quick tip, which is gonna be about locking focus for better portrait photography. I've received a lot of questions regarding focusing and what is the best focus mode and how do I lock focus for portrait photography and that's what I'm going to answer for you today. I simply use single point focus system. That's it. Now this right here is just an entry level Nikon camera. If you follow me at all you'll know I use this camera in a lot of my videos. This is the D3400. Now I really like this camera because it's capable. Now it doesn't really matter what camera you have, just know that you will have some kind of single point focus mode on your camera. And a lot of manufacturers today really tout this ability for more focal points and they want to charge more money for it. And you know, it's not necessarily a bad thing, but is it really needed? Now understand the concept behind a lot of focal points, and that is so that you can track the subject moving through the frame. And it's nice to have that, of course. And Sony also touts the ability to track the eyeball, and other manufacturers do the same thing. But I want you to know that when I'm taking portraits, understand that the subject is still. So that means I get to compose the scene and they're looking back at the camera or wherever I want them to look. Now this gives me the ability to use just one focal point and I lock it on their eyeball, recompose, and take the shot. Now I'm gonna show you just real quick on how to set up the single point focus mode on this entry-level Nikon camera. On the back of this camera, you're gonna to wanna to press the I button in the bottom left-hand corner right here where my thumb's tapping. That's gonna present this menu. You're gonna use the pad on the right-hand side where my thumb is, and you're gonna navigate down to AF area mode. You're gonna select it by pushing the OK button in the center of the pad. That's gonna present these options to you. Single point, dynamic, 3D, and auto. Again, we're gonna stay with single point and I'm gonna select this by pressing the OK button. And now we're ready and I'm gonna show you just a few examples of where I have focused on the eyeball and then recompose for the shot. As we get into a few examples, I just wanna level set. All three of these shots were taken with the fixed 50 millimeter lens attached to the camera and I had the aperture open to 2.2 or 2.8 depending on the shot. And I also like back button focus. If you're not familiar with that, I'm gonna post a couple links in the description below. It's something I've been using for a handful of years and I really, really like it. Now in this particular shot, I had a model that was leaning up against a wall in a relatively small, kind of dark alley in downtown Indianapolis. And her head is angled and tilted back towards the camera. Now when you have a model or a subject that is facing the camera like this, what you want to do, or what I do anyway, is focus on the eye that is closest to the camera. So in this particular case, I leveraged the center focal point and I locked the focus on her right eye, which is right here. And you can see it is tack sharp and in focus. And again, with the aperture open wide, I got a nice bokeh here in the background and it just makes for a nice overall image in my opinion. So again, I locked focus on the right eye, recomposed it and took the shot. On this example right here, we were outside, so it was really, really bright out. Now her head again is angled, but it's the opposite way, so I lock focus on her left eye. And you can see this nice bokeh in the background, and with all this bright light, we had the ISO turned all the way down to 100, and again I think it makes for a nice looking shot. On this last example here, you can see that she is facing the camera. Now when you have a subject that is like this with both eyes that are equal distance from the lens, it really doesn't matter which eye you focus on. Just pick an eye and you'll be fine and that's what I did right here. 
And you can see how the bokeh comes into play even on her right shoulder. So we really start to get that nice, soft, blurry background. Again, I think making for a nice looking image. I hope you like this video. Keep in mind, this is just meant to be a quick tip. This video is intended to be relatively short, straight, and to the point. Nothing special. That's what it's all about. Now, if you like this type of video, be sure to let me know in the description below, and that way I can create more of these. And don't forget, I'm on Instagram, so if you're not following me over there, check the description below as well, and I'll post a link as to how you can do so. If this video has helped you out, be sure to give it a thumbs up, and if you haven't done so, subscribe to the channel. It's called Real World. More often than not, I post videos about photography and technology, but you never know. So until the next video, take care of yourself and be safe.